Raised in Adobe Cottage in 1872, it's a high plains Eden that blends the different cultures and traditions of those who have lived here before. In 1974, Ronald and Nancy Reagan named it Rancho del Cielo, Heaven's Ranch. A perfect description that still holds true today. In fact, they're here today. And earlier, President and Mrs. Reagan went off on horseback to enjoy the beauty of the great outdoors. The Reagans tackled the ranch's reconstruction with their famous respect for the land and its traditions, working the land themselves, honoring its authenticity to protect its historic roots in the Golden West. Well, it sounds like the President and First Lady have returned from their ride. As he tends to the horses, let's head over to the tack room where we'll meet with the President as he puts away his riding gear. That sounds like the President now. Hello, Mr. President. Hello. It's a gorgeous day. You know, I've been in and out of this place for years, and I have never seen it look as beautiful as this. Tell us about your ride, Mr. President. Well? Please, uh, sorry. Please, get, get settled. Nancy and I went seven miles up a switchback road. I must admit, Nancy's quite an accomplished horsewoman. She sure is. Mr. President, could you tell us about the ranch? Well, I'm proud of Rancho del Cielo, a 350-acre ranch overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It truly is America the Beautiful. Yes, and it's very peaceful here, too. Do you find that your time on the ranch helps you balance the pressures that come with being president? To my mind, nothing compares with the kinship between man and animal you find on the back of a horse. I'm not sure what it is, but there you are, in charge of an animal with more muscle in its neck than you have in your whole body. From the minute the horse takes his first step, every muscle in your own body responds to it. How much of this experience is physical and how much is mental, I don't know. But there's no better place for me to think than on the top of a horse. Now that sounds like a great way to collect your thoughts. Since we only have a few minutes with you today, Mr. President, are there any messages about the country and its future you'd like to share with us? We've got to do a better job of getting across that America is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise, and freedom is special and rare. So we've got to teach history based not on what's in fashion, but what's important. If we forget what we did, we won't know who we are. Let's start with some basics. More attention to American history and a greater emphasis on civic ritual. Thank you, Mr. President. You did very fun. Say, so you wouldn't mind if I told you just one more story, would you? Maybe you know this one about the old boy that taken over some creek bottom land and it was rocky and covered with brush. He got rid of all the rocks and hauled them away and then he planted and he really had a beautiful garden there. And one day at church, he asked the minister to come back with him after the sermon. Well, the reverend arrived and he said, oh my God has certainly blessed this land. I've never seen anything so wonderful. And look at the corn, I've never seen anything as tall as that. God certainly has been good to this place. And he went on that way until finally the old man was beginning to shuffle a little bit, said, Reverend, I wish you could have seen it when the Lord was doing it by himself. Great story, sir. Any closing thoughts? And so it is with our nation. We've been blessed with a vast and beautiful land and with an energetic and enterprising people. Yet it's up to us to keep our nation prosperous, strong, and free. Thank you all very much for being here. God bless you.